Hi, I'm JP. And I'm Adam. I've never seen Lost. I have. I'm told that it's good. I liked it. I'm told that it made sense. Sort of. But we're watching it out of order. So it definitely won't make sense. But it might still be good. Since we won't expect it to make sense, we'll still be able to appreciate each episode on its own merits as a one-hour story. Sometimes two or three. As opposed to just a fraction of an ongoing, sprawling, and increasingly complex tangle of relationships, personal stories, mysteries, mythologies, experiments, social dynamics, unnatural disasters, unanswered questions, and hot tropical hookups. Are you okay? I'm not sure. Because you lost me a little bit there at the end. Good, because I've been lost since the beginning. We're We're lost lost on Lost. Ooh, welcome everybody to Lost on Lost. I'm Adam Busher, and I'm joined as always by Lost on Lost School of Dance Auxiliary Campus Summer Internship Recipient, J.P. Russell. I start. I started with Fauci and just kind of made it my own thing, you know? <laughs> That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do is yeah. make it yours. <laughs> yeah. J.P., before we get started, I uh, want to cover a thing real quick. I was taking a quick yeah. look at our analytics, and I wanted to oh. mention a couple of things there. Yeah, sure. Uh, first off, I wanted to congratulate you on uh, 3,000 downloads. Oh, hey. <laughs> I don't know when that actually happened, but Podbean oh. wants to give us a badge for it. <laughs> Neat. Can we cash that in for money? <laughs> Just for Cole's cash. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, And then second, I wanted to give a big shout out to all of our international listeners. We've got a huge uptick in our listener base in Sweden. So thanks (laughs) or talk to all the law heads in (laughs) Stockholm and Vastra Gataland. Yeah, big, big lost heads over there. (laughs) And then I really quick want to mention our sponsor, Dharma VPN, the best VPN for listening to Lost on Lost at Work. Use the code (laughs) PharmaRay for 50% off. Today we are talking about <laughs> Abandoned, the sixth episode of Lost and the 31st episode of Lost overall. Our centric character is everyone's favorite dog sitter, Shannon Rutherford. Abandoned <laughs> takes place on the 47th and 48th days after the crash of Oceanic Flight 815. JP. That's me. You got a recap? I do. I'm so glad that you're doing the this one because I would have no way to make this funny. <laughs> Well, good news, neither do I. It's like Alanis Morissette said, it's like rain on your wedding day. Well, there's rain, but instead of your wedding day, it's the day you get shot by a disgraced cop. (laughs) On the island, Sawyer is struggling with his gunshot wound. The Tailies struggle to outrun the others, and Shannon struggles with having something to do in this Shannon episode. (laughs) And uh, Charlie's on drugs again because drama. And in the before time, Sabrina Carlyle plays the literal evil stepmother that every Disney film ever has warned you about. Hey, Saeed, maybe you could make a cool fuck shack for everybody. That's a pretty good joke, huh, Cindy? Wait. Oh, my God. Who the hell is Cindy? Die, Shannon, die means the Shannon, the here on Lost on Lost. (laughs) Uh, nice Adam. <laughs> yeah, oh, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we we have a guest. You're kidding me. I'm not. Uh, I want to welcome to the show the Matthew Tucker. Yay. Hi. Yay. <laughs> welcome to the show. I am happy to be here. This is the first time I've actually participated in something like this that I have not myself produced. So this is a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> well... Let's wait for an hour and see if you still feel the same way. Um, Matt, (laughs) tell us a little bit about your background with the television program Lost. Have you seen it before? Have you never seen it? What's what's your experience with this show? I have never seen it, save this one episode. I remember (laughs) talking about it like back in high school and having it be this kind of big thing that was a hot show um i had other shows to watch you know as there's like the problem with tv is that there's just too much now with mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. streaming you know there's yeah. like it's just too much yeah there was too much tv 15 years ago and now there's more <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's, yeah. yeah it's ridiculous um yeah so i just remember like kids talking about it and then i'd ask questions and they would have absolutely no idea how to explain it because they're like <laughs> i have no idea what's going on i have no idea and so I'm like, yeah, I'm not really interested still in us. <laughs> and now that I've seen one episode, uh, yeah, like, do you feel centered now? <laughs> well, I, I feel almost vindicated that I did not waste any time watching the show in my youth when I when I was playing guitar and just being a doof. 
<laughs> Still, I'm a doof. Well, t- take take the sense of confusion you feel at this one episode out of context and just stretch it out over six seasons and you basically get the same experience. So Well, and I remember there not really being particularly too good of a payoff at the end when the show ended anyway. So I was like, eh, no harm, no foul. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're getting there. Yeah, the finale, <laughs> yes, is... Uh, I, I, um what's the word controversial yeah controversial like i think there are there are some people who love it and will defend it to 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 their deaths and some people are just like i can't believe you fucking did that to me (laughs) well don't don't get me wrong like i i recognize that as an artist and appreciator of art that you don't get to determine what an artist arts right you can't tell an artist what they create Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. like they're like regardless of how i feel about like the sopranos ending Mm. or (laughs) game of thrones um, mm. you, I re- still respect the creativity and the art that goes into making something sure. like that. And I just, I have to passively receive whatever it is. And that's just yeah. what it is. Sure. Well, speaking of the Sopranos and Game of Thrones, what, uh, what else do you watch then if you don't, uh, when you weren't, if you weren't watching Lost, which you weren't, um, what were you watching instead? Did you, were you ever a big TV guy or are you a big TV guy now? Or, you know, I, I had my moments uh for a while but then i didn't have television for years and i really didn't miss it Mm -hmm. and then the advent of streaming came around and i kind of sheepishly got into that because i really didn't like i was totally fine not being up to date on like family guy or whatever Mm -hmm. but uh, yeah the problem with netflix is like yeah i'm gonna watch an entire season in a weekend Mm -hmm. and hate myself Mm -hmm. but also like be totally okay with it sure and then at the end you're like what the hell did i just watch (laughs) right you know um but i feel like i'm okay with never watching television again and th- packing it up and throwing it away because I just finished season four of Stranger Things. And that is peak television, storytelling, art, just fantastic sound design, the whole thing. Like <laughs> even the weak characters are still selling the scene, right? Sure, sure. Um, it's just it's just fantastic. And I'm like, OK, boys, wrap it up. We're done. That's it. <laughs> I can die now. Like I have experienced peak television. That's how I felt once I finished Murder, She Wrote. Uh, <laughs> fucking love that show. Um, do you guys want to talk about some Lost? Absolutely. Can't wait. All right, let's fucking do it, man. Um, before we get started, I do just want to say, so I, I watched this on Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. Oh, with the x-ray feature yeah uh yeah, which occasionally helps but the thumbnail for this episode and the little chiron or whatever that uh gives you your your episode description is a picture of sawyer and it sawyer's sawyer's wound becomes life-threatening as they travel through the island <laughs> let's talk about this shannon episode <laughs> That was like a total of three seconds of airtime. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Abandoned was written by Elizabeth Sarnoff and directed by Adam Davidson. Elizabeth Sarnoff was the last writer on Lost to solo a script. Every single episode after this one, the, they were all written by writing teams. And for good reason. <laughs> uh, and uh, Adam Davidson won an Oscar in 1990 for his short film, The Lunch Date. What? Yeah. <laughs> How the mighty have fallen. <laughs> Start off, Davidson also both worked on Deadwood, but I don't think they were there at the same time. So mm. there's some information for you. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we uh, we open on the beach. <laughs> yeah. Shannon is uh, giving Vincent some water, and then Saeed shows up. <laughs> well, like, she also just calls him dog, doesn't she? Like. Yeah. Oh, does the dog actually have a name? Yeah, Vincent. Oh, thank God. I was That was actually uh, a part that I was very disturbed by. That the dog was there and it didn't have a name? Yeah, like guys. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Favorite elder. So it's name of like, you can even get like ex- weird with it. Like name it literally, name it chicken. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think it's funny when pets have human names. It makes me want to, like if I ever have a pet to give them a human name, like like jp your pets are they they have human names <laughs> all three of them yeah like, charlie alfonso and ted yeah <laughs> uh, um, it just makes me think of the airbnb uh like thing that you uh it was like a, a bit that they you'd see on the internet it was like uh oh this, read the instructions that i got from the host of this airbnb uh make sure to sleep with the door closed otherwise kevin might come in and try to lick your toes and i was like what the <laughs> fuck and then they, the, the, the host Kevin? emailed and was like, Kevin's my dog. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, Airbnbs, uh, Sh- uh, Saeed shows up <laughs> to ask Shannon to follow toes. him out to his, 
<laughs> what JP aptly named his fuck Jack. <laughs> oh, this is yeah. the second time in this show we've seen somebody make a like halfway decent looking dwelling for like ulterior motives while mm-hmm. everyone else is just sleeping on the beach under a tarp yeah and it pisses me off yeah it's day 47 <laughs> it's obvious that you can create a decent shelter to protect yourself from the elements which is like what you need in a survival situation but apparently people will only go out of the way to make adequate shelter for fucking <laughs> so <laughs> i mean my notes that i have since i didn't know their names yet i just gave them nicknames sure sure he is just man because he was the first man <laughs> sure and she is blonde too because she was the second, second blonde, blonde woman that i saw uh, so the note that i have is man seduces blonde too with tarp he gives her the tarp she is pleased his mating dance is accepted quote is that a gun in your pocket <laughs> <laughs> you sound like one of those computers that's been fed like uh, 10,000 hours of fucking lost and was told to write a script. And you know what? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. That, that's, that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. They, they like, they start making out like the, the goo goo eyes and all that. And, and the, yeah, she goes to like wrap her hands around him and like, and then, smooch, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, yeah, his pistol is tucked in his waistband where you keep your pistol when you don't have a holster. I mean, with the Listen. safety off. Always. <laughs> I mean, the same thing happens to me all the time when I'm sort of, you know, getting down and somebody's like, what's that in your pocket? And I'm like, oh, this is my Yu-Gi-Oh deck. I got my blue eyes, white dragon right here. I keep this on me because I got to protect the ones I love. Got to make sure you hold it with the two fingers. Nope. Exactly. <laughs> you just activated my trap card and the trap is a boner. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> that, that, when he said that, that irritated the shit out of me, actually, when he put the gun down and then she said, do you always have Do to you carry, carry that? that? Yeah. And then he says, I carry it because I have someone to protect. Um, this mm-hmm. island literally eats people. However many guns you have, every person should have at least one and yes. always carry them. Which is a little ironic and foreshadowing that he didn't protect her with his gun. <gasps> oh my god. I would say shots fired, but you know. <laughs> Jesus. That might be a bit too on the nose. <laughs> like always always carry the pistol always if you have a pistol in this situation always carry it even if you're trying yes, to snag always like, like yep yeah <laughs> even when you're chasing after a woman telling her that she's wrong <laughs> yeah i always have a gun on me when i do that um <laughs> cut to the tail survivors oh boy they're having a real bad time jesus the tail survivors never have a good time no except for bernard because we here on the podcast know he's like the only one who actually survives <laughs> yeah basically but yeah they're still on so we're flashing back because like again here on the podcast we've seen the next three episodes four episodes yeah, after this yeah. one like we saw the the other 48 days we saw a collision we saw like blah 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 so we know we Is are the other 48 days the episode right after this yes dude such a good fucking episode yeah so so yeah so this this is going back to when they're still like they're leaving whatever shitty tail survivor camp they had and they're going to the less shitty middle section survivor camp right and we we still don't know how sawyer sawyer got shot do we we have not seen that. okay okay good and didn't just forget (laughs) he he mentions in there that you know he got shot what or did did he mention he said something yeah he says something about it but i i didn't know what the hell he was talking about all they said was oh they they took my son when he got like that it was Michael saying something, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of Michael, so they they're not moving because some of the party is missing still. Michael and Jin and Echo aren't back yet. Mm. Yeah, Echo and Jin have gone off to find Michael because Michael ran off. Sawyer sticks his foot in his mouth a little bit, what, or like right before they return, like mm-hmm. which is like classic Sawyer thing to do. Like, yeah, I, I'm not gonna say classic Sawyer thing to do. I'm gonna say classic line given to Sawyer to make him seem like a shitty, shitty person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was uh, kind of taken aback by the, the casual racism <laughs> Ponce de Leon mm-hmm. comment, uh, but I thought it was really kind of funny. At 408, I call him hot and dumb. Um, <laughs> at 408, he says, she's lost. And I said, that's the name of the show. Drink. Drink. <laughs> 
uh yeah that you you exactly nailed it there matt we've we've talked before about how the show either characters repeat each other's names in the way that no one ever does or it does not give any character names at all and this is another one of those i think we only get shannon's name because saeed yells it a bunch mm-hmm. yeah and and boone but like oh that's yeah it. Uh, sorry boone was hot and dumb hot and dumb too he was hot and dumb too yeah, yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> and i i said that uh so he he shouts or he says she's lost. That's the name of the show. Dude uses casual racism against quote her Majesty Queen of fuck around and find out Opolis. <laughs> Surprisingly, he subsequently fucks around and has clearly not yet found out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Matt, you could have written this show. <laughs> well, I love historically. I love Michelle. Can only do an English accent for half a movie, but still gonna kick your ass all the way, Rodriguez. <laughs> yep. That's, uh, I look forward to that in the new Dungeons and Dragons movie. Um, anyways. Yeah. Uh, Echo, Echo and Jin returned with Michael and then they were like, we got to fucking bail. Uh, we saw the others. They're coming for us or yeah. they're all around us or whatever. Um, but like, we can't stay here. So let's, let's yeah. leave. And they're like, good idea. <laughs> Just curious. Does everybody speak Korean? No. No. Or do they understand Korean? No. Nope. <laughs> So is that why he makes the Chewbacca joke? Yes. Yep. Oh, that's not just racist? Okay. Well, it's both. Oh, no, it is. It's both. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, okay. this is uh, in a chronologically later episode, he calls him Chewy again uh, or later. Um, and we had the. He's a multifaceted racist. <laughs> right. Which is not really common amongst racists. Right. Usually they're no. just racist about, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, so he apparently Chewie is a name that's thick because yeah, nobody can understand him and he thinks he's Han Solo. Yeah. But yeah. So from there we cut back to the beach. Um back to the fuck shack, baby. <laughs> You guys keep talking about the show. I'm going to go write lyrics to <laughs> fuck shit. By the B-52s? Science says fucking. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, the fuck shack, uh, it's their, their afterglowing, um, you know, just, it's kind of cute, actually, it's, you know, does this mean yeah. we're serious? Uh, I do this for all the girls I meet on deserted islands. That's, a, like, fun, yeah, that's a funny line. Yeah. Um, she's like, I'm going to go get some water. Uh, he's like, let me do it. Uh, cause it's easier for a man to cover up on broadcast television. That is a woman. Yeah. Well, and I, I think about this versus like when, uh, was it Sawyer and Kate hooked up and she's like, you know, it's afterwards and she's like, I gotta go back to my tent and it's so cold and distant and this is very like, yeah, they're they're gonna hang out and have some more fun right. later. Like, it's, it's very loving. Right, like, I'm gonna go get water, we're going to rehydrate and then ding, ding. Do this with again. The bells, yeah. <laughs> with the bells back in. Um, <laughs> if you knew what he was doing, he would have gotten bananas too because you gotta get that potassium up so you don't get the muscle cramps. Smart, <laughs> smart. <laughs> Hold on, I'm taking notes. What else? <laughs> Water. Uh, she, I mean, she should have went to the bathroom too. Or, like, as long as they're yeah, all right after, like, yeah. avoid a UTI. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. The, the she. Okay, so like, fucking fuck shack. Um, she. He gets up to go get water and so like we stay on her as he gets up and gets dressed and so like she is just I fucking him while he is putting his pants on like the look on her mm-hmm. face and then we cut back to him like zipping up and it's like she was just staring at his hog and he was just facing her he didn't do that coy turn away thing so like he shows her her butt like he stood up and uh, you know was like yeah yeah <laughs> Um, you like <laughs> you see something you like <laughs> it's uh, I don't know why he's speaking Spanish all of a sudden uh, <laughs> he leaves and she like stays and then we have this, yeah. cre- we have this creepy cut back to somebody just standing <gasps> in the doorway just oh. sweating profusely <laughs> yeah yeah. This caught me the fuck off oh, dude, guard, it man. Jumped. I jumped. Like I was like, "Holy fuck!" Like I, yeah, it, it shook me a little. Because my in the millisecond, my brain had to respond. I was like, "Hey, Walt's back. Hey, Walt, <laughs> leave. Don't want you here anymore." Hey, Walt, don't be in here. 
But yeah, this Walt, it's not Saeed, it's Walt. Um, and he is drenched and he is speaking gibberish. Gibberish. Or yeah, I turned the subtitles or... on and it's I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. Uh, as a sound designer, I always love fake demonic chants. Mm. <laughs> Because, like, the sound design on stuff like that is just a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. If you don't have homemade demonic chants, store bought ones are fine. <laughs> <Store -bought's> fine. <laughs> As he's chanting, uh, water is just like pouring out of his mouth. Like, um, it was really yeah. creepy. Don't like it. She screams. She, I mean, like, as, as she should. Fuck, I screamed. <laughs> oh, God. Title card. Yeah, smash to the title card. We cut back immediate. It's immediately after. Um, Said is uh, has returned. Mm -hmm. Shannon is trying to explain to him what she saw, and he's just like totally dismissive. Mm -hmm. He's like, "You were dreaming. You were asleep. You must have nodded off. Like I, I fucked you so good. You, you're in a coma. <laughs> I knocked the sense right out, you. <laughs> I have written here classic Americana gaslighting. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this was, what, 2006 Something. when this one came out? Yeah. I don't even uh, think we had that word then yet. No, absolutely not. And now, you know, the gaslighting with these gas prices, we can't even afford it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh... <laughs> Claire uh, is here, and Charlie and Ch is here Charlie's also. Charlie's here, and, and the baby's here. The baby's here. here. The... Okay, so like some more shit here where men just like boss women around. Um, Charlie's like, why'd you wake up the baby? Uh, you took her, the baby. Like, okay, like, okay, he's not necessarily wrong, but he doesn't have to be a shit heel about it. Just classic Charlie shit, doing a, the right thing poorly or badly. Well, I mean, uh, there was a scream. Someone's in distress. So she's she's damned if she does not she's damned if she doesn't. You brought the baby to what could have been a, da a dangerous situation. Bad move. You came to see what was going on and you left the baby alone on this dangerous island. Also, also a bad call. So yeah. she's fucked either way. Yeah. Or the third option, kept the baby asleep, stayed in the tent, got eaten by a dinosaur or a smoke monster or whatever. Yeah. She, yeah, there was no good option. Charlie made it seem like she's a bad mom, and that was really, really mean. Mm-hmm. Shannon uh, is sick of being gaslit, and so she's like, I'm fucking out of here. See you later, Saeed. Yeah. I mean, rightfully so. Yeah. And, and he's like, but... But I'm right. But babe, come but back. babe, no, babe, come on, babe, babe, come on, <laughs> babe. <laughs> but like, uh, Megan, your jacket. Um, but the <laughs> the thing is, is like, and uh, this, you know, we'll get into this toward the end. But like, this island is full of spooky supernatural things, and no one believes that Shannon saw something. <laughs> Right. Yeah, we'll get into it a little bit later. But yeah, this island is incredibly dangerous and so much strange thing have happened in the 47 days after the safest place is the place where they're at and people and eight people have died there already oh, since yeah. like, I don't know, whatever. We cut to the a flashback. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they did this weird thing where they like showed this little blonde ballet dancer. And I was like, is this Shannon as a uh, child? Shannon. <laughs> yeah. And then, no, it's, it's uh, Shannon is a dance instructor. She's teaching a bunch of uh, girls some ballet. The, it, uh, when I found out that this was what her job was, I was like, this makes total sense. I, yeah, I that, buy this. That checks out. 100%. Yep. But at least she's working. Um, she's also, and we don't find this out until later, apparently 18. She does not like 18. <laughs> Yeah, no, but, <laughs> but that's that's also Maggie Gray. She's been playing yeah. an eighteen year old for the last fucking twenty years. <laughs> she, didn't she play an eighteen year old in Taken like eight years after the show? <laughs> oh, was that her? Like five years after the show? Yeah, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah, perpetual teenager. Yeah, basically, uh -oh. she's actually getting younger. The government knows. There's nothing <laughs> any of us can do about it. Give me some of that Benjamin Button disease. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the class wraps up. She says good job to everybody. Her and another uh, instructor are giggling because this dude, this French dude is hitting on the other yeah. instructor and they're perved out by it. It's uh, whatever. She gets a call while they're talking about this guy and um, it's bad news. Um, her yeah. father was in a car accident and uh, she's got to go meet her mom at the hospital. Yeah, emergency. Yeah. St. Sebastian's Hospital. Oh, I wonder yeah. if we're going to see Dr. Jack Shepard. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this show's so deep tucker you will have no idea who the doctor was that walked behind them in the next scene but it's like the main character oh that's funny piece of trivia matthew fox <laughs> appears in this episode without speaking lines that was him walking through the hallway or hustling off to somewhere or probably try, trying to find a patient to sexually harass um in, oh. a, in a 15 foot wide hallway still managed to have to squeak past one person standing by themselves. Let me just, let me just, oh, oh, 
I'm just gonna bet you. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, they get there, and uh, by the time they get there, Shannon's father, Adam Rutherford, um, has died from the injuries sustained in the car accident they had. The doctor explains it all to them. I just wanted to be known that it's not typically a hospital policy to tell you that out in the open in the hallway. <laughs> Usually there's like, you know, some bedside manner involved. Yeah. No, Matt, I'm sorry. Uh, not according to, let me check my notes here, um, every television show. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's some pretty horrible news to have to hear. Uh, Shannon doesn't deal with it necessarily that well. She shrieks and cries out as, well, you know. Um, yeah, it's terrible. Uh, Mrs. Rutherford, mom, I just call her mom through my notes because, again, we don't find out her name till way later. Yeah, super late. But it, like she does, she puts in this little shitty dig here. Oh, that's his. That's oh my god, my stepdaughter. I guess. Yeah. Shannon. Would your daughter like to come along? She's like stepdaughter. I'm like, okay. You're an evil bitch. Yeah. Cool. Uh, it, uh, apparently, the first step in her br- grieving process is being a huge cow. <laughs> I had a different c word. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Cut to the jungle. Um, Abby's looking at Sawyer's shoulder. You know they're they're still sort Abby? of trudging through. Isn't it Abby? It's Libby. Oh, is it? Oh. Libby, played by Cynthia Watros, who was uh, on the t- <laughs> uh, Fox sitcom Titus for three seasons. God damn. <laughs> oh, man. You walked right into Fuck. that one, you butt. <laughs> but here's the deal. Her and Cindy are such, like, throwaway. <laughs> they're, they're just bodies to get thrown into the island meat grinder. Like, they have no arc. They have no... They're just a name that we can cross off the list of alive people. They're the lost red shirts. Yeah. L- Libby does have an arc that was, I think, probably sadly cut short by Cynthia Watrous's DUI. <laughs> yep. Well. <laughs> um, but the producers have not confirmed that. <laughs> No, no, of course not. But yeah, they're having a rough day. This is a lot of rough. They're just having a rough day and sort of collapses for the first time, much like Jesus. Mm. Um, you guys know that one. Jesus fell down three times on his way to the cross. No, no. We can cut that. <laughs> <laughs> nope, it's staying in. So uh, she, she, you know, she, she's talking to Sawyer and he's like, you know, how bad is it or something? Or like, it's it's pretty bad. And she's like, you know, it's, it's not that bad. And it's like, we just established that you're a psychologist. Is she just playing a mind game with him to right. make him just think that he's better okay well come on who's my big strong boy yeah maybe yeah. maybe don't introduce those same two things in the same scene but uh, whatever. Here, here's sawyer what are you a doctor uh yeah i'm a shoulder specialist <laughs> <laughs> you're fine get up <laughs> i like how nobody's cleaned it no I, I don't know how long he's been with this injury but it is not looking good no, very bad. I think part of it is the mid the the tail section survivors ain't got shit. They made a vine strap basket stretcher <laughs> for him in like fifteen minutes. Fair point. Yep. That's a fair point. You're yep. not wrong. <laughs> yeah, just put a leaf on it, <laughs> guys. Cut, from there, we cut to the beach. Yeah, back to the beach. Yep. Oh my god. I, I this scene and um, the Charlie Claire on the beach scene. I feel like there's a third one too somewhere. Yeah. I I literally wrote in my notes this conversation is pointless. Um. So I put uh, Hurley and Rose are having dryer talk. Yep. Neat. Yep. They're doing laundry. Um. Shannon comes up and asks after Michael and Walt's stuff. Is it still around? Rose says. Uh. Or they 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 yeah. It's like probably it's still beach. up in their tent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think this might have been my first WTF moment watching this episode. Uh. How so. I didn't know his name. I called him Midwest Maui. <laughs> uh, These are good nicknames. You're better at nicknames yeah, than Sawyer is. Exactly. Yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> yeah. It just casually mentions a doomsday button. Yeah. Yeah. Don't dwell on it. <laughs> you will be uh, completely unfamiliar with it, and it does not have anything to do with this episode. I. They, it's just one of those things that they put in this episode so that people who are watching the show, I guess, don't forget about it, but it's not important. Is this Marcellus Wallace's golden case? The, yeah. I mean, kind of. It's kind of a red herring for like seasons one through three-ish. See, well, it's like season one, they're trying to get into this hatch. Season two, they're in the hatch. And so like that's where the button is. And it's, but it's, yeah, it's kind of a MacGuffin. It doesn't, I don't, I don't know. Hmm. Um, maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. We don't know. Find out more on Lost on Lost. Shannon goes up to Michael and Walt's old tent and they starts rooting <sighs> through stuff. Um, 
again, I, I know not everybody agrees with me. All that stuff should have been reappropriated for the common good as soon as they went on up on the raft, or at least not buried under the fucking right. sand. Exactly. Like, like did the did the wind just like blow sand all over their shit, and it's like starting to be reclaimed by the island or whatever? The day after they left, be like, all right, we're gonna take this stuff for safekeeping and whatever. Shannon digs one of Walt's shirts out of the half buried suitcase and tries to make Vincent sniff it like a bloodhound. Um, but she like shoves it in his face. She like, yells at him kind of too. Yeah. This is Walt. Smell it. Smell this. Now go. Yeah. That's not how that works. Oh. No, that's not at all how that works. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 it's better than any other idea, I guess. But like, mm. she was a little rough on the leash. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I just gotta say. Yeah. 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 Vince, it, it, she's under the impression it works because he starts running off. Um, he goes 30 feet to the graveyard where we find Boone's on island grave. Yeah. Oh, man. I was hoping he was going to go back to um, what's Ben's dad's name and find his other hand. Uh, <laughs> Roger. <laughs> yeah, Roger, Roger, Roger Workman. <laughs> yeah. Roger Workman. Um, that's it. Yeah. She gets there and she kind of stops looking for Walt because she ran into Boone's grave. Yeah. We cut back to the beach, uh, Claire and Aaron. Uh, Aaron's crying. She's like <laughs> trying to get him to stop. John Locke stops by. Hey, what's wrong with the baby? You won't shut up. Uh, babies like to be constricted. I actually kind of, I really like the brief note synopsis that I made for this. Let's go for it. Old bald man sues baby with daddy magic because they have the same haircut. <laughs> also, where do people find razors on deserted islands? Old bald man makes passing BDSM joke to blonde number three. She likes it. There's daddy dom little girl energy here. Oh man, is Mary a junkie? <laughs> <laughs> um what, uh, what did you refer to his daddy magic as because i've i think that's what i also refer to it as <laughs> john uh jp's obsessed with john Locke. J, jp and jl forever it's carved on Always. every tree <laughs> jp walks every, past every desk in every middle school <laughs> Well, I, I love that uh, later on uh he and mary have a daddy off mm, yeah and and yeah. John's daddy magic is just too powerful. Yeah, he, he, John Locke is everybody's dad. Yeah, mm. but yeah, like the swaddling thing. I mean, yeah, that's not that's. It, it, I, you made this joke a while back, JP, when we were doing Tabula Rasa about like you know you have to learn things. Everybody's a blank slate. Blah blah blah. Like yes, Claire does not know how to be a mother. Right. That's not something you just know. You have to learn it. So like right. And that's I don't. And she's got like she's that's... got no support as to learning these skills. She didn't have a midwife. She didn't have like a a parenting class. None of that. Right. And that's that's the problem is that her journey is soft skills. It's not an emotional journey. Like it's it's like here learn the ta the the ABCs of being a mom. But like. Uh... I don't know. We don't really see a journey of her like loving the child. She, it was just born. And she's like, I love my baby. Whatever. Like, I just <laughs> don't like everybody like in this episode, at least just dumping on her for not knowing how to be a mom. Like, yeah. And if you know how help instead of being condescending about it, you bunch of cocks. Uh, any first time parent it, it has no fucking idea what they're doing. You know, like, I yeah. Don't know. Yeah, whatever. Um, we have a, a huge fucking stretch of dialogue to get to. Well, I hardly know Charlie. Uh, maybe he's a religious freak, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think that's Charlie. Oh, he's always carrying around that Virgin Mary statue. And I started beating <laughs> myself in the face with a hammer. Um, uh, Charlie, Charlie's back on smack, whatever. Like, Well, he might not be back on smack, but he definitely has some. Because he just casually walks around <laughs> with heroin, yeah, in in a statue, yeah. Oh, this this is my walking heroin. <laughs> <laughs> Said no heroin addict, right? Yeah. If yeah, if he's got heroin, he'd be doing it. If he's an addict, uh, he's a TV addict, so he's only on it when mm. the story needs him to be on it. Um, yeah. Flashback. The, yeah, dude. Oh, oh, one more thing before this flashback. You're right. The, oh, the, sure. the, this was so, so much, so long and forever taking the scene. <laughs> and yeah, like I, 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 the amount of stuff that I wrote, I just reading back in my notes, I'm like, why did I write all, all of this? Because none of this matters at all. No. No, this is the third conversation that's a nothing conversation. Yeah, and it happens again later. Cut to the, fl yeah, flashback. Um, It's uh, Adam Rutherford's funeral. Yeah. They're, you know, doing yeah. the funeral thing and boom, yeah. boom shows up. Apparently they weren't necessarily expecting him to show up because Shannon's very happy to see him. Is his opening line, death sucks? Dying sucks. 
or dying or death sucks. sucks yeah something like that um death sucks huh yeah superb writing yeah yeah great yeah. a yeah, yeah. <laughs> also can i just say jesus christ it physically hurts how attractive that man is like it doesn't it, like i can't my brain can't function because i'm like trying to figure out the golden ratio of his eyebrows it's just <laughs> It's 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 distracting. frustrating. Yeah. yeah, it's it's wildly inappropriate how attractive <laughs> Ian Summerholder is. Like, it's not. It's really not. Like, it's not okay. <laughs> he, this, he, this one casual flight from Australia to LA was full of very good-looking people. Like my goodness. Yeah, it's yeah. it's weird. It's like he's walking around constantly being photoshopped. <laughs> Yeah, like it's a walking filter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although I got to say, 18-year-old Shannon takes that shot of scotch like a champ. No mm. coughing, no face, no nothing, just kicks it back. She's done it before. Yeah. Oh, tr on. trust fun kid. Yeah, this ain't her first rodeo. Yeah, scotch in the flask. Interesting choice for in the flask. Usually it's just usually it's just whiskey. Yeah, whiskey or a bourbon, but a scotch. Yeah, but scotch, mm. all right. Boone, you big weirdo. <laughs> These kids grew up with a with an in-ground pool. <laughs> They uh, they they are in Shannon's bedroom and yeah they're talking about how Shannon and mom don't get along. They talk about her moving yeah. to, to New York. Apparently that's where Boone lives. Mm -hmm. you know, Shannon believes that mom resents Shannon's relationship with her father, which is super fucked up. Yep, it's all real real neat. Um, cut to cut back to the jungle. The tailies are taking a break. There's. Sort of looking around. Um, they're they're on the coast, you know. They're 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 thinking they're going to make their way just to the beach, but then they in, like encounter a big rocky area that would be impossible to get around. So they yeah. have to cut inland, uh, which puts them back in the crosshairs of the others. Yeah, uh, and so he's continuing to deteriorate his condition. He yeah. collapses some more. Um, you know, they're trying to get him water, all that stuff. Um, Ana Lucia is a cow throughout this scene. Yeah, um, not great. You know, you want to cut inland and risk all of our lives just to save this cowboy or whatever. Yeah. Cut to the beach. Uh, Claire makes John hold the baby. The only notes that I have is he sniffs the baby and his name is John. <laughs> Next scene. Moving on. Yep. That, nailed it. <laughs> Come back to the tailies. Um, Ana Lucia. Uh, oh, they, they, there's another fight here. Uh, uh, Sawyer falls down again. Yeah. They're whispering, they're in the jungle, and Michael demands Ana Lucia explain why he's got to be quiet. And Ana Lucia explain, gives the, the, you know, the elevator pitch of the shit they went through through the first 48 days. Yeah. You know, a bunch of them got kidnapped, a bunch of them got killed. Uh, not that many of them survived the plane crash to begin with, blah, 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 blah. I got Link doesn't like being told. Oh, I called him Link because that's his name in the Matrix. <laughs> Link doesn't like being told uh, to do things by women. Strong woman, hot, sweaty, strong women. Link is emasculated, and he fucked around and found out. Yeah, basically <laughs> the oh the 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 little bit of like hyper vigilance there. I do appreciate how the tailies are like so fucking on edge. Yeah, because they've literally been systematically like hunted and killed. Yeah, and our tail survivors are just like constantly in a conga line with margaritas um and like even in the military they don't they specifically are like we're not trying to teach you hyper vigilance because it is mentally like Draining. damaging yeah. yeah so um yeah so they, they they go through this whole thing and Anna Lucia talks about what a bad time they've had and at the end of that all Michael has to offer is they took Walt <laughs> like, like okay yeah we get yeah. it you fucking broken record yeah. we talk about this all the time. So, yeah, it sounds like you went through some shit, but like, don't forget me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shut up, Michael. Come back to the beach. Uh, Shannon's still at the grave. Um, Said <sighs> arrives. They uh, they have a little chat. Said continues to not do the right thing here or say the right thing here. <laughs> yeah, her. he thinks that she's upset about Boone and. Yeah. It's not what it's about. It's yeah. like, no, you're upset that I, I, I saw the scariest version of Walt that any of us have seen and you don't believe me. Right. Yeah. So she's like, I'm going to keep looking for Walt. Do not follow me. You know, I don't need you. Go, go away. Whatever. Flashback. Shannon gets the internship letter that yeah. her and Boone were talking about earlier. Uh, she and got has like a one in a million chance. Yeah, she fucking got it, man. Yeah. So um, she's got skills. They're not necessarily island skills, but they are skills. Yeah, totally. She's, she's still a hell of a dancer. Probably a good dance instructor, I would assume. But then she gets informed that her rent check bounced. Yeah. 
uh, Shannon's lifestyle has uh, apparently been being subsidized by her father. Her father's rich. Yes, but so by right. extension, she's rich. Um, so she goes to talk to mom about getting the taps turned back on. Stepmom. Uh, yeah, stepmom. And uh, she's like, no. <laughs> She says, "No, you got us. That we had a, we had a living trust instead of a will. So I have all of your dad's money now, and you can go screw." Yeah, she. We get a a, a brief little chunk of lines where she's like, "You know, you you need to get a new job. You know, like last year it was you're going to be an interior designer mm-hmm. or you know some something else, something else." So we, we we get the feeling that like she's gone through many, you know. She's gone through many, many careers. Yeah, you, she paint, it paints that picture of the bored, rich person who just jumps from thing to thing. Like, she's trying to make Shannon out to be a dilettante. And it's like... At 18? Yeah. And that's what I thought. Talk, yes, thank you. Thank yeah, I was you. like, oh, so like, so she was 17 and be like, I want to be an interior designer. Okay, don't, when your child is in high school and says, I want to do X, don't listen to them. They're, they're, they are a child and they will change their mind because they haven't been exposed to a lot of stuff. Once they start getting exposed to things in their lives that they start to like, their, their fucking opinion is going to change. Yeah. Or encourage them to... to try something and grow and figure it out and if they don't like it they can move on to something else and figure that out too yeah it's the growing Dude, process th- the fact that by 18 she's she's taking interest and like invested some some time and thought into multiple careers yeah. like fucking end of high school what the fuck I, I was just like i was watching jay and silent bob strike back every weekend you know like i had i didn't know what i wanted to do post-college yeah like, yeah. Uh, like i i changed uh, majors like four times during college like in between the ages of 18 and 22 like i was still t- trying to figure out what i was doing yeah that's not know. abnormal man shin stepmom's a bitch yeah she she basically just uses this as an excuse to be like well your father's not here to help defend your side of the argument so i'm cutting you off and yep. um yeah, you're on your nice life fuck off yeah don't ever talk to me again yeah um uh, cut to the beach john Locke and charlie play back game john out daddy's mary <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were going to have a con- confrontation about the statue, but it didn't happen. No, but it it's laying the groundwork for it. John's sort of probing yeah. him to be like, yeah. uh, you know, you you talking about Claire needing to take responsibility. She was a lot for a heroin addict and Charlie's yeah. like recovering. Oh, like, right. right. Excuse right. me. Recovering. Yeah. Uh, my, what a, my bad. I, I misspoke. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's it. Tucker, you that's said it. It. He, Charlie gets out, daddy. We move on. Um, back to Tailies. Uh, this is the third time Sora collapses, but this time it might be for good. <laughs> uh, oh, no. He tries, he tries to do the thing. You just, just leave me. I would have left you, whatever. Um, him and Michael have like kind of a little conversation, like a little back and forth here as Sora is just on the edge of consciousness. He says, I would, I would have left you. I did leave you. And you know, yeah, we haven't seen that, I don't think. Yeah. And Michael says, it's a good thing I'm not you. And Sawyer has yeah. just, just this ever so slight smile before he loses consciousness. I, again, there's so many times where Michael is this broken record and useless and sort of uh, not neurotic, but just like unlikable. And then there's these other times where he says shit like that. Where I'm like, damn, Michael, that was some real shit. I, I like that. You know? <sighs> yeah. And and then Sawyer too, like smiling, like he's been antagonizing Michael this whole day. Well, since they crashed, yeah. And uh, but like it, I don't know, I just, we we know more about Sawyer than hypothetically the chronological viewer would know. Sure. But like again, it's you see under all of Sh- Sawyer's shitty character traits, mm-hmm. and you see a little bit of his heart and there is a person inside there under all of his damage so yeah I kinda and like that person little. is still wildly racist yes yes that, that does not excuse <laughs> any, of, any of his shitty behavior they build a stretcher um they're like we're, we're gonna carry <laughs> you're carrying him yeah i didn't say okay we're gonna build a stretcher and fucking you and anna uh, anna lucia you and cindy grab it no we're gonna do it don't um Really quick, Matt, did you notice anything about this scene? I noticed a lot of things about the scene. Why don't, why don't you go ahead and tell us what you noticed about the scene? I want to see if we noticed one of the same things. About, about, about the next scene or the, the scene currently about them uh, when he passes out? Yeah, this scene where he passes out. Well, my notes, I have, uh, man, fuck this blade of grass because we open the scene with him, the leader, just taking his machete and annihilating just a single <laughs> stalk of grass for no reason because there's clearly a cut path for the actors and he just just to sell the scene mm. just angrily chops this one that's totally out of the way blade of grass how does everybody speak korean uh. hot and dumb passes out he dies probably they're gonna make a stretcher 
<laughs> so not, not try to clean the wound? Yeah, no, none of that. Um, there's a line that um, Cynthia Watros from the television show Titus has um, where, so her and Anna Lucia are yelling at each other, trying to decide what to do once Sawyer passes out. And Anna Lucia is like, we're gotta, we, we gotta go. And um, it was Abby, Libby, Cindy, Libby. whatever the fuck her name is, Libby. Libby says, uh, maybe if we rest, he'll regain consciousness. Oh, yeah. The way it's cut, it's a really, really bad ADR. Oh, um, dude, I saw oh. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. I got to check that part back out. It yeah. was like it, taking notes. It was blatant. Like, there's this the audio and her mouth straight up didn't match, like, at all. Yeah. <laughs> I love <laughs> and, it. I did see and that. They cut halfway through the sentence, and I was like, does that even sound like her? Is that a different actress? Like, I mean, Matt, you you would know better than us, but I, I understand that ADR work is incredibly difficult. Um, so, you know, maybe that's one of those where it's like, oh, fuck, we just, we don't have the time. Yeah, a lot of weird stuff can happen. Plane flies overhead, somebody burps, you know, totally ruins the take, but it looks good. Or they uh, realize, man, eh, that didn't really actually make sense the way we said it on set. We can actually rewrite this a little bit yeah. and then uh and you got what you got <laughs> yeah because yeah i mean they're 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 putting the episode into the post process probably three four weeks after it's been shot it's not you know it's not right going to loop group it's not going to that until yeah a month a month after the fact well, and this was all shot on film they had to fucking physically get the film oh, from geez. hawaii to la where it was being edited yeah <laughs> So. Do you know what island they were filming on? Uh, Oahu. Oh, it was Oahu. Okay. They did. They went to the Big Island a, a once in a while for some specific stuff. Like there was a lava tube that they shot at, um, and some other stuff. Mm. But yeah, they they were on uh, on Oahu. That's right. The two of you have both spent quite a bit of time in Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. I I saw the mountain uh, in a wide shot, and I was like, huh, that looks like Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what's next? They make him a stretcher. Um, like a pretty nice one. Yeah. Anna Lucia says something about like, do you remember Goodwin? And I screamed to no one. Lost on Lost remembers Goodwin. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget Goodwin. Uh, then from there, we cut back to the beach area near, yeah. nearby the beach. Shannon is stopping mm-hmm. outside. He's following her. Um, she explains to, to him why she believes she saw Walt because she believes that Walt is back. Yeah. They they based on the knowledge that they found a but the bottle that they had sent along on the raft with the letters all the you know letters to home right. that the survivors sent yeah. off on the end mm-hmm. the- uh, so then it dawns on Saeed that maybe she's not full of shit hmm. I don't know maybe I should have believed her maybe I should have just believed her yeah I don't know back to the Cut tailies to the jungle yep. um, I, they do the, the they have to carry him up a hill yeah. or up a, a cliff, a cliff um, yeah. I, I appreciated that the scene was mostly silent however the wide shots kind of make it look like they could have just gone around gone around <laughs> it looks relatively uh shallow incline to the to the left and right of them but maybe it's just the camera i don't know they get up the hill um once every like it, it, it's a struggle to get Sawyer up the hill even though yeah they probably could have yeah. but by the time they get up to the top Cindy's gone missing Cindy's the brunette white no, girl she's gone lost <laughs> <laughs> drink <laughs> And so they start looking around for her, and then we hear the whispers, the creepy whispers. Oh, like, it's wizard speak. <laughs> um, is this the part? Is this the scene where Anna Lucia wildly swings her gun around, or is that in the next cut? No, I think that's this one. Yeah, that's this one. She draws her weapon and just starts jarringly pointing it in directions. That's just kind of her thing, right. you know. Like, I mean, like Sawyer loses guns. Jack yeah. is misogynistic. Charlie does does Heroine. drugs, and Anna Lucia just kind of like waves guns at people. Yeah. We cut to a flashback. Shannon's packing some stuff up. Uh, Boone enters her apartment and gives her some yeah. bad news. Uh, he went yeah. to mom on Shannon's behalf, tried to get her a little scratch. She said no. Uh, she saw through the the whatever Boone's ta- or Shannon's tactic, yeah. Boone's tactic to get the money, whatever. And and not only that, she's offering Boone a job mm. like back here, which would uh, you can assume she did that so that Shannon doesn't Shannon. have any resources in New York to like. Yeah, she's actively sabotaging her. Exactly. Yeah, and, but and Boone, uh, poor dumb beautiful Boone, doesn't realize he's being manipulated. So he takes the job or says he's going to take it. 
you know, yeah. even he, if he, you know, he had half a brain, he should have realized what Sabrina was trying to do, and you know, but whatever. But he's just not that bright. It's a good thing he's so hot. <laughs> just <laughs> frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, like it's weird. Like how do you? How do you tip the scale so much in, from admiration to just visceral anger at how attractive somebody is? Wait until you see Jin shirtless. To- <laughs> oh, Lordy. <laughs> so let's, let's all take a quick lap. <laughs> cool yeah. off. Just, just thinking about it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm open losing a window. my train of thought. Uh, uh, Boone offers her a little bit of money. He's like, here, take some money. Like, go to New York. And still go. Like, I won't be able to help you yeah. right away. Like, I have some trust for money coming in. I'll hook you up. And she says no because you you don't believe I can do this right. basically exactly. link which then feeds directly into the next scene Shannon uh, is yeah. still, we, we we did we got some thunder noises in the previous thing so that when this scene just starts and it's just already pouring we believe that rain was coming yeah but just, yeah it's just pouring right now and Shannon is running through the rain she falls down so uh, Saeed catches up they have this you know she she finally gets to the point of the whole thing just like I right. need you to believe me because all yeah. my life nobody believes me nobody believes no in does. me if you if you care about me please believe me yeah and uh, Saeed's usually just such a smart guy and I would have thought he would have got there way before this but like I don't know yeah I he had to know. have it just fl- a flat out explained to him well he, he went blind due to booty I think yeah. you know like yeah, that's fair. booty blindness yeah it happens it's like snow <laughs> blindness but more booty um, <laughs> significantly more booty like, yeah yeah 30% more <laughs> As as uh, he finally says, uh, he he, oh man, like he says, I love you. It's like, yeah, okay, damn, bro, all right, falling hard. Mm-hmm. You guys just met, you just hooked up. Talk, yeah, I mean, talk about booty yeah. blindness. He's thinking about the, but he's thinking about the cake, and now, now he's in love. He <laughs> made her a tarp tent. I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, he didn't do that for anybody else. Said's love language is construction. <laughs> I love when she was like, when did you make this? And for Saeed, it was probably like 90 seconds ago. I make everything on this fucking island. <laughs> uh, once once they're reconciled, um, they, they also hear the whispers. Well, really quick. She says something about like, everyone leaves me. You know, yeah. I you're going to leave me as soon as we get off this island. And he says, I will never leave you. And it's very earnest and very like, fuck, man, I believe it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I mean, you know, what? Uh, what's that old saying? If you scratch a cynic, you'll find a romantic underneath. I find mm. myself pretty cynical and disillusioned with the concept of tr- like traditional and entertainment romance, like romance and TV romance. And it's usually oftentimes cliched, but like you can get past that cliche by having somebody perform well. And Saeed, I think, yeah. does that here. Like, yeah, like I believe that this man fell in love and is in yeah. love and and yeah, I, I, I bought it. But that's also, I mean, Navy and Andrews is just like a fucking rock star. So like, Truth. you know, he could he could sell any scene. Yeah. So, but yeah, then once they've reconciled, they hear the whispers. <laughs> and then <laughs> over Shannon's shoulder, Walt is in the tree line again. Oh, fuck. Walt, go away, you creepy little <laughs> bastard. We were going to get down again. <laughs> But Saeed sees it too this time, which is does he though? I think yeah. He, well, that's a good I think question. he does. I, th- I think he does. I think he well, does. He, he, you know, she looks over his shoulder or her shoulder, and then he like looks to see over her shoulder, but he doesn't really react. And she asks him like, "You see him, right?" And he doesn't react. And I think he's like stunned because yeah, when I she think that's gets what it is up too. to run off. He sort of like he you, after she's got he minute. has like a snap like too like he doesn't even see her run away because I think he I think he was frozen by seeing Walt mm-hmm. yeah because now he's also he's also rethinking everything like, oh fuck no, like I I wasn't just saying I believe you now now I understand and now I'm trying to process like like go through all of our conversations and everything that just happened but also oh fuck she's running off into the woods right yeah. Oh, you mean that like she had an experience and that she was telling you about it and then you totally said that she didn't have that experience and then you also had an experience and now it's real? (laughs) Exactly like that, Matt. Exactly like that. (sighs) Shannon runs off to catch Walt, I think. Yeah, to him, to where he was at least. And uh, and, uh, we hear a gunshot. Black cat, 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 cat. Ooh, Saeed gets over to where the noise was. Uh, Shannon stumbles back toward him. She has been shot pretty much dead dead center mass, and she collapses. Now, didn't Michelle Rodriguez mention one gun and one bullet? She did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, 
I like the fact that it, uh, I have here in my notes, it was Michelle. Michelle was the one who fucked around. What a twist. <laughs> <laughs> Which, something, that doesn't, like, oh, I don't want to get too far into the Lost on Lost Weeds here, but, like, in two episodes when she has Saeed, like, tied up to a tree, doesn't she have a gun with bullets? That's the thing. I don't, it, it, according to what they've established here, she shouldn't have any ammo. So two, two episodes from now, yes, when she's holding Saeed at gunpoint, he could just hmm. take it away from her because she can't shoot him because she's supposedly out of ammo. Because, yeah, when, when they cut back to Ana Lucia holding the thing, the slides it back all the way. Right. Open, which mm. means the, the pistol's empty. Yeah, I don't get, I mean, because I, I know that she makes demands like, okay, go back and like get ammo or, or something like that of, of Michael, I think, mm-hmm. in that episode or like yeah. we want bullets or something like that. Like she could have just like rode the action forward and then like said, oh, I popped in a new magazine. But like, yeah, does she, do, do you got any bullets? No bullets. Yeah, I don't know. There's a wide shot of Saeed holding Shannon's dead body. And the look on his face. Fuck me. Yeah. Like, I wish they would have ended on that shot instead of going to the close because the fa- like he, he was silently screaming in this in that shot. Yeah. And or, OK, so like they cut to the close and that you cut just a frame out of as he starts to stand yeah. up to go tackle yeah. her, um, which is yeah. also a good shot. But like seeing yeah. that wide of Navy and Maggie Grace sitting there in the rain and uh, like I was. Yeah, I was a little yeah. rocked by it. Like, yeah, totally. And that's it. Boom. Lost. That's abandoned. Jeepers. I had a hard time thinking about this whole thing. Yeah. But let's figure out if we liked it or was it good. Um, that's the question we like to ask at this point now that we've sort of been talking about the episode. Did we like it? Slash was it good? Tucker, what do you think? How, did you like it? Was it good? So I actually don't really have any criterion to determine whether or not I like something. It's purely feeling 100%. Sure. Which is why I don't really like talking to a lot of people about things that people create because <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> they just get like too far into the weeds. I'm like, I just thought it was cool. I liked it. I don't know. I just liked it. I thought it was cool. Yeah. Um, having said that, no, <laughs> I did not like this episode. <laughs> I didn't, I just, uh, it just was cringy. It was bad writing. It was, uh, you know, I understand why they had to write it the way they had to write it, but it's just, it, it was poor craftsmanship of a bygone era. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, JP. Totally fair. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm right with Matt on this one. I did not care for this episode. Um, for a Shannon episode, uh, it had, I mean, Saeed's the only person that goes through a journey. We spend if what feels like almost no time with Shannon. I feel like just as her character was getting interesting and they were giving her something to do, they killed her off. Yeah. So, yeah, no, did, didn't really care for this one. Adam? Yeah, I think I have to agree. The um, All this episode did for me was uh, reinforce the fact that Shannon Rutherford is a wildly undeve- underdeveloped character, and they actually probably could have gotten some mileage out of some interesting stories had they taken time to give Meg Grace things to do. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. They did her dirty. No They doubt. did. All right, so no. Triple no for Abandoned. Do better, Lost. Oh. <laughs> Well, and it's such a whiplash because the next episode of this show is like fucking awesome. one of my favorites. Like, it's so good. <laughs> oh, geez. Do I have to see the next one? <sighs> On its own, it's not great, but in the context of Lost, it's very good. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get into our uh, uh, end of the episode segments. Then let's do let's do the first one first. Lost MVP. Who uh, who was the who was the man or or woman or person who who carried the episode on their backs? Who who is the champion? Just as forty five minutes for abandoned. Uh, no context. No memory. No anything else. This should be easy for you, Matt. Uh, who is your favorite <laughs> for just abandoned? <laughs> Big ball daddy magic man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt 100 yep. percent. sold every scene he was in totally believable mm. thought he was spot on with everything number one class act not bad i'm just gonna replay that uh audio of you saying that every time i'm having a bad day 
That's <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Uh, JP, what about you? Who is your lost MVP? Uh, Vincent the dog. He is not a trained bloodhound or tracker seeker, uh, any of that. And you know what? He's he still did his damnedest. He's he's like, all right, white lady, let's let's go on an adventure. <laughs> and uh, you know what? He's he's trying. <laughs> Adam, who's your MVP? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm uh, going to agree with uh, Mr. Tucker, John. Hell Locke. yeah! Um, specifically, uh, he, yeah, throughout the episode, good, uh, good performance by Terry O'Quinn. But specifically, the episode where him and Charlie are playing back game, and he's getting yeah. put, you know, getting Charlie back in his place, kind of like, hey, dude, you don't run Claire's life. Like, think about your own shit. Recovering uh, addict. Like, you don't need to be about raising a kid. You need to be about focusing on recovery, or that statue you carry around is going to get broken into. So, and by statue, I mean your face. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, John Locke. The other side of the coin. Mm-hmm. Who sucked? Who sucked shit? <laughs> who was just bad? Who could we really have done without? Who was lost forever? Matt. Matt. Uh, Matt. Go ahead. Oh man. I mean, just on the context of this episode alone uh i was just largely unimpressed by midwest maui <laughs> really <gasps> i mean he, there, just because like everything else in the episode had a purpose to drive sure. as poor as it was to sure. drive the episode yeah. Yeah. we i still have no idea what the doomsday button is there's a hatch and he wants to use a dryer like that's all i got matt this is a first this yeah. is a first for Lost on Lost. We've never had Hurley as a Lost forever. I just, I don't, I, I just, I mean, to be fair, his 15 seconds of screen, yeah. you know, I don't know. Right. I'm sure he's a great character. I just. He was very wasted. Yeah. Nobody's perfect too. Like her, it was bound to happen at some point. Hurley, yeah. you know, everybody's had their turn in the barrel and I mean, Hurley. You know, Today it's Hurley. had to happen. I rescind my vote and I recast the baby. We can totally do without the baby. <laughs> no, 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 that no. Baby sucked. It had no lines. It didn't do anything. It just sat there. It was just an eyesore the entire time what's the what's most the, babies are what's the phrase like don't add to the conversation unless you can improve the silence and hurley didn't do that you know <laughs> he, he's just sort of jabbering on filling yeah. a few minutes so man yeah that's okay and, and yeah the one thing he contributed to the, the discourse yeah he was wrong dude don't waste energy could dry your clothes on the line yeah there you go Hurley. Plus, drying your clothes on a line actually is a lot better, not just environmentally, but also better for your clothes. Yeah, they don't it shrink. It retains the color and it, they don't shrink. Mm -hmm. And it also retains the quality of the fabric because you're, you know, you're not shredding the fabric of it. Yep. Yeah, come on, come on, line dry or uh, what, <laughs> what, what do you, come on, clothespin industry, sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> is it C48s? Yeah. C48, yeah. Yeah, 47s. Honestly. 47s. Yeah. C47. Um, JP, who's your lost at four? Ever. uh elizabeth sarnoff try again i uh, yeah. i don't know like r write a better episode like uh no just no yeah jack kelly always mentions this the that laws probably would have benefited greatly from the shorter episode the modern shorter episode orders that we get with new television yeah. if, they, if they didn't have to do 24 episodes in season two they wouldn't have done everything that happened in this episode i mean ga gaslighting in general is incredibly frustrating and aggravating to have to also watch it on tv is just not a, a way i want to spend my free time and <laughs> that, that being 90 percent of shannon's journey in shannon's last episode is just and then she dies yeah i don't I In her only that. centric episode. This is the only yeah. Shannon centric episode. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. Try again. Mm -hmm. Adam lost forever. Uh, Ana Lucia. I mean, <laughs> beyond beyond FTP. <laughs> I mean, fuck. I got to the end of the episode actually being curious about Shannon and want and wanting to know more and knowing that we're not going to get to actually flesh out this character who was in you know one and a third season of the show and they never gave her anything to do and then just when i started to actually care whether or not shannon was a whole person Ana Lucia fucking shot her so yeah Ana Lucia. Yeah, man. fuck the police yeah and fuck yeah and fuck the police as always yeah i mean that's the thing i got to the end of this episode and i was i actually i actually started to ca be curious about shannon as a character yeah. and that was it they got rid of her so yeah fuck <laughs> That is abandoned, guys. We uh, we did. Either it. you have a burning question. Me no. no Matt, do you have no. any burning questions? No. <laughs> 
Be- besides, why the hell did we have you watch this episode of Lost? <laughs> I'm just happy to be here, honestly. <laughs> well, and we're happy to have you, Tucker. This was fun. Uh, this this was as much fun as as it could be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe we'll uh, have you back on for a better episode <laughs> somewhere down the line. <laughs> if you'll have me, that'd be great. Absolutely. Thank you for taking the time to to come and chat with us. Um, most episodes of Lost are much better, much enter- more entertaining than this episode. Yeah. This was so f- like I remember we dunked a lot on Homecoming and how bad that episode was. I fuck man. Yeah, this is bottom of the barrel shit. This is rough. Compare, I don't. I'd rather watch Homecoming again than watch Oof, Abandoned. Jesus, again. I'm okay with the bar being set low and staying low. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Tune in to Lost on Lost next week. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, do you have anything you want to plug before we get into? I don't know. Probably. I'm really bad at like self promotion. I don't even yeah. know what really to say. That's okay. Um, you know, hi, my name's Matthew Tucker. I'm an audio professional in the <laughs> greater Milwaukee area uh, for all of your sound needs. <laughs> Call Matthew Tucker. Uh, have have microphone will travel. <laughs> have microphone will travel. Oh, there we go. So, Perfect. So good. Perfect. Uh, if you all out there are trying to be lost with us next time here in Lost and Lost, we are going to be talking about... Whatever the case may be, that is the 12th episode of season one, hmm. and uh, it's a Kate episode. So, <sighs> find out more about Kate. Really, really, really wish they would have mixed in another Shannon episode somewhere <laughs> so we could <laughs> care about them and not learn more about Kate. I know everything I want to know about Kate. Yep, which is and nothing. We talk about Anyways. Her a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> All right. Again, well, uh, Tucker, yeah. thank you for uh, taking the time. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. I'm Adam. I'm JP. Do you have any idea what's going on on the show? Nope. Me neither. Lost on Lost is produced and edited by me and JP. We wish to acknowledge that we live, work, and produce our show on occupied land. Burbank, California is located on the traditional tribal lands of the Tongva, Chumash, Keech, and Fernandeño Tataviam peoples. Milwaukee, Wisconsin is located on the traditional tribal lands of the Peoria, Potawatomi, Miyama, and Ho-Chunk peoples. And Lost was produced in Hawaii on the lands of the Kanaka Maoli. Visit native-land.ca to learn more about the land you live and work on. You can engage with us on IG, Facebook, and Twitter at Lost on Lost One. You can also email us at wearelostonlost at gmail.com or support us with dollar monies at coffee.com slash wearelostonlost. Thanks to Lostpedia and its community of contributors, Danny Schmitz, Random.org, and as always, you the listeners for tuning in. We're hosted at Podbean. You can hear us there or wherever you get your podcasts, except MySpace. We're, we're not on MySpace. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Tucker!